Hey everybody. We had a question on the effective TDs form about how to get particles to flow through a tube or along a path using only uh, APF. And APF, of course, being advanced, advanced particle fields in TP6.6. And this method from the user is pretty cool because it does work. And what it does is it'll actually have them flowing through. But you notice that it gets small here. It gets a little bit bigger in those spaces. And that's really nice. Um, mine doesn't do that. But mine does some other things that you might find useful. So we'll take a look at that here in a sec. The one thing I do want to point out with the method that we use and that the person chose in this case using uh, to accumulate based on is the position the cell position not inside the mesh um, which is this mesh this blue mesh here if that cell is not inside then we do store and accumulate values um, and that works and that's cool we like things that work the danger is that if you then uh, let's go ahead and show the data See, they use the box method to define a, a grid, and then they populate all the cells except for the area near the tube that it's traveling. So if you decide to uh, change the cells per dimension, dangerous. That's going to consume a lot of memory. It's going to really, oops, yep, yeah, there it goes. So that's totally going to jack you. So that's unfortunate. Um, what we're going to do instead, if I can get that to quit, goodbye is we're gonna look at a different method uh, this method you'll see here goes snap and what it does is it uses particles and right now we're displaying velocities but what it actually uses is the particle alignment to populate the APF field cells to tell particles uh, where and how to flow so let's take a look at the result and we'll see that it's not quite as nice because it doesn't um, it does not get large they don't spread out in these big areas of this tube but what they do do is they just kind of shoot through real tightly um, you know it's a start so we're going to take a look at how this works and why this might be useful for you so we're going to start off let's, uh, let's go ahead and disable the APF stuff We'll also disable the tracers. Our groups are set up where we have two sets of uh, groups here, the VEL groups, the yellow and the orange. The path VEL is yellow, and of course, you can see those vectors kind of flowing in this direction. Uh, we give them a little bit of velocity just so that we can actually visualize it. But remember, we're only using the alignment of those particles. So anyway, we create a whole bunch of them, uh, kind of divide their that total number based on the no, the count that we're running in order to create a 0 to 1 normalized value along this path. Um, we give them a little bit of uh, variation so they kind of spread out from that path and then we give them that velocity of course also position alignment but also that velocity in, or, in order to visualize which way they go. Okay so then now something in TP you do have to watch out for is you know we set these values here so notice where these things are in the tree the particle data is set kind of first then position is set after that and then velocity set after that and then after all those notice where this happens bang this offset position now is going to get the whatever the current position of these operations evaluates to since it's lower on the tree that's important okay so we take that offset position we get the direction from my current position toward the actual spline position and that data is going to be used to generate these uh, inward vel, the orange. And those inward ones we set them kind of uh, far away we basically create a distance value take that direction multiply it in order to kind of offset them uh, add that to their to this existing current position so that they go even further out, create them, uh, set their alignment based on the direction so that they're pointing back toward the center line, and then we uh, give them velocity in that same direction in order to only or in order to visualize. The velocity is not really important. Remember, we're only going to be using the alignment. Okay, so we'll go ahead and enable the birth tracers. Tracers are just the 
teal color, light blue that go running through. Basically, birth them at a volume. That's fine. Let's get into the fun stuff. So in the, here in the AP field, we're going to go ahead and create this. Type is going to be a velocity. How big? Cells per dimension. Only generate the AP field data on simulation start because nothing is moving in this case. If you are going to have things that are going to be changing over time with modifiers, then set it to subsample. And EO range is going to be loop, so that whatever the last value is that this field has, it's just going to go ahead and continue to use it. All right, so initialization. This might look a little complex. You can actually disable this. The big thing here is we get the path vel, which are the yellow. And these path vel, they're going to say, hey, get my direction, get my x direction, which is the direction along the path. We're going to add a multiplier. We use this multiplier in order to control the strength and speed of that vector, which is going to be accumulated into the AP field. So basically, take the direction, the velocity multiplier, or the, yeah. Multiply those, and we're going to store that as a velocity in this AP field. We also do that with the inward velocity. You'll notice that the path vel has a real strong value, 200. The inward has a much lighter, lower value. It's only 20. Um, this way, you kind of have some control over that. If you did want to recreate um, something with that would allow the particles to go farther out and then come back in, you could just populate these inward vels and birth them further out, maybe make more of them, and have them still pointing back in. What we'll do in another video is we'll actually try to get them to flow tighter through these uh, chambers inside here so that they'll come in, they'll spread out. I don't know if we'll get them to kind of swirl around. That would be a little much and then have them flow back out. Okay, so then the output is pretty simple. We just say, hey, uh, we're using this AP field. The group we're going to affect is the tracers. We're going to output velocity, use multiplier, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. We do add a little bit of direction variation. Um, these tracers, you don't need a whole lot. See, we're and this is setting the speed and the direction. It says, hey, this particle, take my existing velocity, take this velocity, add a little bit of variation to it. Watch out, because remember, speed is actually a multiplier. By default, when you create a velocity operator, the speed comes in as 10. So this is actually going to multiply its existing speed by 10, and they're going to speed up really fast. So set that to 1, our variation angle, and we're going to play with this variation angle and show you what happens. Uh, let's see here. Everybody knows how much this is dangerous, but edit on the fly is off, meaning as we go forward in time, Oh, let's actually see this again. So there's our initialization. This populates the AP field. This is actually the first frame of the sim, which is frame one, which is right here. Okay, so next frame, all those particles disappear because they're gone. We have the values in the AP field. So this goes flowing through. That's great. But here, let's take a look at this and let's add a little bit more. Let's double our variation. Okay, not a lot. Let's go five more times. 10 times total. And something that might happen is that these particles, you see some of them, they spread out. Now this is not as nice. And there you see them actually kind of running away. They leave the field. And so this is where you might want to populate more uh, orange particles further out in order to direct those particles back in. You can also do some fun math where you say you take these orange and not just have these orange point directly back toward the uh, spline, but actually have them look at that spline value, which direction is it going, and blend a little bit of direction back towards upward, you know, along the curve. So it's the power of math. We'll cover that in another video. So that's that. It's just a, a different way to fill um, an AP field with data using only the alignment. There's no velocity used. Remember, the velocity is just for the display purposes, so we can actually see uh, kind of which way they would be going. Um, the trick to this is you have to just get your axes correct. Um, our path vel, we're setting using the path vel on the x axis here for their alignment. Set that alignment there. And then, of 
course, back down here where we populate the AP field cell data using that alignment, use their X direction, and in this case the inward vel, their X direction is actually pointing this way also. So, anyway, I hope that's useful and just one of many possible solutions to get things done. To check out more cool stuff, please visit Effective TDs. Got a great forum, a lot of very useful information, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks.